Hi there, this is Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio. Um, I'm just going to do a rendition of the demo I did at Music Mesa. We had a few technical problems at Music Mesa, not to mention a massive noise floor that really interfered with things. Um, so I'm going to show you how I would go about creating a trailer under severe time pressure. I want to really demonstrate how quick uh, Albion One is. It's not something that we engineered into the library, um, but this latest incarnation of Albion One as opposed to Legacy really enables you to work very quickly. So I'm going to be working solely with Albion One with the exception of the piano sound, which is Olafur Arnold's absolutely fantastic uh, piano sound, part of his uh, composer toolkit. Um, so let's have a brief look at this. Now I'm going to basically repurpose the BT Phobos uh, video. Um, obviously the type of music I'm going to be doing using Albion is not going to be uh, indicative of either Phobos or probably BT's style, but it's quite a dynamic uh, uh, video with a few uh, different chapters and stuff. Um, the only bit of preparation I've done, I'm going to write, I'm actually going to compose it on the fly and I'm going to purposely make sure I don't do anything that, like I did at Music Mesa. All I've done is actually prepare the sounds because I think a video of me loading in uh, sounds uh, is not going to be great, but also I think actually it's almost like preparing a template. This is a, a very quick way that you can um, get all the, your favourite sounds in and then just pile in and get composing and uh, uh, working loosely to picture. Um, I'm going to try and keep this uh, video unedited, so I may waffle and make more mistakes than you think is professional for a video of this type. But basically, I want to give you a real-time uh, example of how quick uh, you can work with these uh, amazing samples from Albion One, which I'm very proud of. Um, uh, the only other thing I've done is I've just uh, kind of set up an arbitrary uh, tempo map. Uh, that's great. This new function of logic, which uh, you, you call up the tempo map and it's not there, but you can go here, where is it, to tempo, uh, show tempo list. And uh, uh, rather than just having an arbitrary tempo, I've got an arbitrary tempo curve that goes for, starts at 120 at bar 1 and ends at bar 150. Um, doesn't particularly work amazingly with the picture, but I've, I'm under a time constraint here. And uh, one of those is to get diving in so that you guys can see see how I would approach this. So I'm going to mark some, some chapter well, I'm going to mark some chapter markers with um, some really massive percussion. This is the Darwin uh, Easter Island percussion part of the Albion One uh, range. And here we go. So we're going to kick off. It is now 12:56 in the afternoon up here in Edinburgh. So let's oh, let's go. Okay, so that comes on bar two. So just a quick correction of a couple of these. It's a bit late. Okay. And a bit early. Okay. See, none of these are hitting the ones. I'm going to sculpt the music so it kind of blurs the uh, uh, what you know blurs the, the cuts a little bit. Use a few tricks there. I've got another thing coming up here. using the very earliest release of Albion 1, which has that um, flanging difficulty with Darwin. But uh, OK, and then the beginning of this fast section. Cool. Let's just have a look where that falls. I'll leave it just there for a moment. Okay, I'm going to do some Jerry Goldsmith style uh, delayed colenios. These need to be nice and loud. I'm going to probably bring the Darwin down. We'll run out of headroom before we know it. Okay, so here we go. It's too deep. Sorry, wrong sound. Let's see. Red light fever here. 
And this is one of those tricks of how you blur the cuts by just doing a massive flam. There we go. That's it coming up. Let's go along to here. So it's all looking like it's really hitting the cuts tightly. Great. Now I'm going to do a little uh, time marker. Let me start it around here. We're at the end there. Cool, excellent. So let's come up with some melodic ideas. So this is the Olafur Arnold piano with uh, his special uh, space delay and plate reverb kind of pad. I'll just turn down the piano so you can hear that. It's lovely, it has great organic quality to it. So let's do some atmospheric stuff. Okay, it's a bit loose at the front. Okay, just move that one and that one. Okay, it's got a nice little piano intro there. We need a nice big drone on it, so a bit C. These are from the Stevenson Steam Band stuff, which uh, is all derived from our orchestral IP. Um, you'll uh, actually probably hear a bit of an orchestral sound to this. So I'm going to use the expression fader and the modulation wheel to just uh, keep it moving between the dynamic layers and different layers of amplitude. So here we go. gated pad on as well. A bit more tension there. little think of some other stuff I can maybe do at that uh, beginning part but that's a, a good just basic uh, thing for now and I think what I've got to do is I'm going to use a mixture of the Albion one short strings the spiccato and the legar and the legacy sorry which is a bit looser difficult to play in um, but add a, a nice kind of real real color I'm going to switch those emails off real color to them so these react to uh, how hard you play them as opposed to fading through the dynamic layers. You can switch it so it goes that way. But anyway, let's have a look at this.
great. It's fantastic. So let's just have a quick listen. You're just here by doubling up and putting on these slightly looser. It gives it much more kind of a human life. Love these woodwind shorts in Albion. Uh, not often used in kind of this epic, epic hybrid uh, music, but I think it's really cool. Adds a kind of slightly John Adamsy edge. So let's see how we can work these in. Just set the level there. going to do exactly the same with those I'm going to stick those uh, with the uh, legacy ones which again slightly looser but have a beautiful quality to them slightly mellower sound okay let's just pump those a bit let's have a listen to that Okay, all starting to sound a little bit system Z and a bit maybe too pretty for the subject matter. So let's darken things up a bit. So I've got these fantastic octave uh, legatos. Crescendo there, so I think some nice low brass. Need a lot more reverb on that. One more of them. Okay, I just want to check, there's a bit of flanging going on there. Got a little nasty, that's right, okay, that's cool. Brilliant. So next part, we're going to put in uh, uh, some more electro electronic material. We have these fantastic uh, Byron uh, loops, some of which are really basic uh, percussion instruments that don't sound like percussion instruments. So it never sounds like uh, Cuban, Afro-Cuban stuff. Um, and it goes from really simple instruments to stuff that's really warped. Um, I think the great thing about these is a lot of these are dynamically controlled as well. So it very much fits in with the applied music kind of um, uh, thing. So I found this one. Let's uh, see what we can do with that. Okay, I'll just save that for that second beat. But one more time. Here we go. Every uh, shape and form. Let's have a listen to. Okay, I'm just gonna stick that there. And where does it stop? There we go. So let's take it up to there. Okay, 
so we've got a. Th- f- Okay, so now I'm going to have a go. And with these ones, what I tend to do... Yeah, okay. So, I, actually, I won't bother doing that because I have to reconfigure my inspector. But um, I would usually actually freeze this so every time I came in, it would be how I wanted it to be. But not to worry for now. Um, so I'm going to add up, build some epic uh, hybrid percussion. Great, here we go. That's going to be for this bit. too confusing so let's just switch that off for now this is kind of incidental stuff there Do this last bit here. Love it. And then some hypertoms. So I'm just going to check these uh, Darwin's are correctly quantized. Okay, now they're fine. So let's have another go. Sense of rhythm today is not great. Here we go, one more time. and we've got this Byron thing going on as well. Okay, so other bits we can add. Uh, I think that we, uh, we've got some really nice, nice effects. So let's whack a couple of those in. What I tend to do with these, the quickest way is just go where I take my finger off is I know where I need to sync it up to. So that's the big smack. should work. And I think we're going to need to make that a lot louder. Here we go. All right. So, so. Nice. And then we've got a... By it should do, and we've also got a nice. Might be a bit cheesy. But... Yeah, what's in the mix is actually quite cool. Uh, other bits to do. I've got these octave legatos. I'm going to put them. My favourite, what I refer to as underbase, is actually the EXS24 on the Logic without any samples loaded. It's an awesome sine wave but what I do need to do is it will go wobbly is I just need to get rid of the um, 
modulation wheel data. Let's keep that flat down there. So this will help this lovely bottom end here. Stick that down an octave. Should make this nice and fat. Okay, I had an idea with this low brass, I'm going to repeat that at the end. Very, very low. Okay, so. Let's do that. So it crescendos to the end. So just one more time. Apologies. I'm just going to do a bit of trickery with this. I love um, messing around with orchestras. So let's, uh, what are we looking at? Tremolo. Make it nice and uh, symmetrical. No smoothing. And then what I'm going to do is automate the tremolo rate and the tremolo depth, which is kind of almost like the, the mix, if you will. And... So I'm going to go up to a direct, direct current and then back it down again, something like that. And then I might add in a bit crusher. And um, there we go. And again. <laughs> Down sampling we want to affect there, so let's have a go there. Bit crusher, down sampling, and uh, okay. And let's have a listen to that. Let's just do it so that it goes like that comes down a bit slower. Turn a little bit to the left. Okay. Bit of fun there. Okay, uh, let's put on the pad, the drone at the end. And the gated pad as well. A little refrain of the piano. Instead of uh, worrying about automation and stuff, I'll just often just d duplicate a track. It doesn't seem to affect system resources. I was toying with the idea as well of we could possibly have a... Yep, I'll just take down the pad a bit, I think.
duplicate that up a bit. That's nice. And I'm really not sure about that Byron beat. What we'll do is just stick it, play safe and stick it on the on the thing there. And run of that there might be a couple of bits and bobs we can add but i think that's pretty much it One more Byron uh, loop. I think just we just need to get it filtered up a bit more. So I'm just going to see if I can find something that's just a bit more um, nasty and and sixteenthy. Okay, that's just the hi hats of the other one that we we're using. <laughs> that's quite cool. Actually, add a bit more hell there. That's a bit of distortion. get a bit more sixteenths in the Darwin as well. Okay, let's just, just bring out some of the top end of that a bit more. And I think we'll probably be there. distortion on that might sound like a bit fun just just to, again just to make it a bit more a bit more edgy what I might do is actually take a slightly closer perspective okay. feels 
good. Okay, so let's just one, watch that one more time. So we started at uh, 12.56, it's now 13.26, so that's exactly half an hour. And with me showing you around a little bit, um, I would work on this all day and probably go back and make some different decisions, make it a little bit less John Adams in the middle, for example. Um, but I think this is just a demonstration of how quickly you can get up and running uh, using these tools um, and being kind of quite bold with your approach. Um, thanks very much uh, for listening, and uh, uh, here it is for one last time. <laughs>